On the outskirts of a small village in Ghana, Kodzo Badago starts working on the cassava harvest on the family farm. Kodzo, who has a wife and six children to support, is one of the many African farmers trying to make a living out of growing cassava. But making money from cassava is often easier said than done. <laughs> I have been farming cassava since my father died many years ago and left the land to me. Cassava farming is not yielding any return. I'm wallowing in poverty and I have no money to buy food. Traditionally, the cassava root has been regarded as a subsistence crop. It is a staple food that's boiled and eaten or dried and processed into flour using traditional techniques, providing a basic diet for millions. In many parts of Africa, it's regarded as a poor person's crop. But appearances can be deceptive, for cassava has the potential to lift millions out of poverty and transform whole economies. The secret lies in transforming cassava into a product known as high quality cassava flour, or HQCF for short a fine white flour produced from freshly harvested roots which are processed rapidly without fermentation. Not only can HQCF be used in bread making and an ingredient in other foods, it can be used in a wide range of industrial processes, for example plywood manufacturing. Helping to spread the word and develop the HQCF value chain in order to benefit smallholder cassava farmers and processors is the aim of the Natural Resources Institute's groundbreaking project funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation known as Cassava, adding value for Africa, or CAVA for short. But despite its huge potential, HQCF use is still relatively undeveloped. One reason is that HQCF is a new, unfamiliar product to many. Whereas in some countries, high quality cassava flour is, was already there before we came, in others, it wasn't there. So, but as people get to know that high quality cassava flour is different from what they used to know as cassava flour, then acceptance level begin to sh shoot up. Uh, so whereas in Nigeria and Ghana they've had previous experiences with high quality cassava flour, some of their factories have used, this, used it in the past, the challenges we are facing was how to make it into a sustainable, commercially oriented value chain. That was a different challenge. In our East African countries, the only experience they've had is with uh, local poor quality cassava flour, which is made from sun drying along the roads, uh, sometimes can get so moldy. Now, this is not high quality cassava flour. So it was quite a challenge to convince these higher order, higher value uh, buyers that, look, we are not talking of exactly the same product. The cassava value chain begins with farmers who supply the processors with the raw materials. In Africa, cassava yields are currently low, but there is huge potential to improve productivity and meet the demand of expanding cassava markets. The next link in the value chain are the processors who turn fresh cassava into HQCF. The scale of HQCF production varies among countries. In some, it is produced at village level by processing groups using simple equipment, while in others, it's a product of small, medium and large scale enterprises. The final link in the chain are the end users who use the HQCF to make various different products. Because HQCF is a new product, creating awareness of its uses among potential customers is very important. The Carver project has been responsible for numerous interventions at every stage of the value chain, such as training, introducing new technology and identifying markets. Across all stages, Carver links necessary players together to ensure the value chain functions correctly. 
And because each country faces its own unique challenges, the focus must vary from one country to the next. For example, in Uganda there have been major improvements in product quality and supply, and Carver Partners have built the capacity of HQCF pharma processing groups. This is essential to give end users and processors confidence that their demand can be met. One challenge has been to find new markets for HQCF, in addition to bread and biscuit making. And a big success story has been to make industrial paperboard manufacturers aware that HQCF can be used as a glue in the production process. And because HQCF is half the price of traditional cornstarch glue, demand for it is booming, creating new wealth and jobs, benefiting the wider economy. So the industries are very excited as I speak now. These end users want big quantities, but they want them on contract. The paper board also wants big quantities, like five tons per week. And uh, I would say that's the biggest achievement, that now we, the market wants the product and they are willing uh, to, sign, to sign contracts um, with the uh, processing associations. In Tanzania, there have been successful interventions all along the value chain. Farmers have received help and advice on best practices, which has led to increased yield to meet rising demand. New technologies have been introduced to village processing groups to make HQCF production more efficient as well as more women friendly. And links have been formed between the diverse network of farmer groups in Tanzania and the end user markets. When we started, uh, the kind of technology, the processing technology farmer we are using were not female friendly. Uh, in the process there is a, a stage where you have to squeeze uh, water from a wet marsh uh, cassava. That was uh, the current te the technology at that time was uh, a screw press that would really require masculine uh, to do that. So that was not friendly for for women. Uh, in the intervention, we introduced a hydraulic jack press, and now women can easily squeeze out water. So this way, we think that women are uh, much more benefiting. And the other side was also on the transportation of the roads from the farms to the processing centers. Uh, in the beginning, most of these female were to carry uh, these uh, logs of uh, cassava roads to the processing site. But when business environment improved, when they could sell more of this HQCF into uh, these industries, they gain more money. They can now employ youth within their villages to carry on bicycles, on power tillers, the routes from the field to, to the processing site. So that way I think women are, are benefiting in us. In Nigeria, Interventions have been necessary all along the value chain. National policy has increasingly supported cassava value chain development, adopting the Carver approach and creating further opportunities for market development. Farmers now have access to higher yielding varieties of cassava, which bring down the cost of production, and they are given advice on the most appropriate cultivation techniques. One big success story has been the development of better processing technologies. New, highly efficient flash dryers have been developed which benefit farmers and processors. New markets for HQCF have also been identified. It means that Nigeria has arguably the most developed HQCF value chain in Africa. Well, I will take the flash dryer fabricator Nobes, Nobes at Lagos, uh, before I met him, was unable to produce one single flash dryer. And today, he has produced a flash dryer going to Malawi. It, it, it's a lot of opportunity for him in terms of uh, experience, international exposure, in terms of uh, competing in the world, and also gaining more uh, uh, investors 
that will be by his facility. At present, the Lagos State Government uh, has already bought one of the new flash dryer that is going to install for them in their factory in Lagos State, and you know the implication. So there will be a lot of money, a lot of opportunity, and it will also employ other people and other service providers. So it's like establishing another industry within the value chain. In Ghana, yields have been dramatically increased and the huge potential of HQCF has begun to capture the imagination of central government, which has drawn up a national policy to encourage the use of HQCF. Finding new markets has been both a challenge and a success story. Professional bakers and caterers are beginning to understand the benefits of using HQCF. So too are business owners in other industry sectors. Although it often takes hard work by the Carver project team to get the message through. The project introduced the high quality cassava flour to this company and linked the company up to a plywood manufacturer. Now initially the company was not did not appreciate the difference between the product that we are marketing and the existing traditional product which is of a lower quality. But then the uh, the, the entrepreneur brought in the, the uh, chief executive of that company to his factory, took him through the process that they go through to produce high quality cassava flour. And when he got convinced, he was willing to offer them a higher price for the product than he initially decided to offer them. And within, uh, that is a year after that, the company was adjudged the best district processor within that, the district where it was located. In Malawi, a value chain for HQCF did not exist before the intervention of Carver. The project established the cassava processing industry, working closely with village processing groups. Farmers have received technical support and advice on improving yields, and new markets in the paperboard and food sectors have been identified. But now new processing facilities are being created, and as a result, HQCF is transforming the lives of individuals and even whole communities in unexpected ways. Like one group in the Mulanji region, who used to make makaka, a poor quality cassava flour. They used to grow cassava, but we were producing makaka, which they were selling at about $40 per ton to vendors who were coming around. They were buying it and selling it to biscuit companies. We turned this group to start processing high-quality flour, and they are now able to sell their product, the high-quality flour, at about $600 per ton to the same biscuit companies, but also to the raw areas. Because of the excitement which this generated, they decided to mold the bricks. Now they are in the process of constructing a proper uh, processing and storage structure. And when the government noticed their effort, they sent in people to serve the place to install electricity. So maybe in the next month they'll have electricity in that village in the rural areas because of the, of, of, uh, the cover import. And that's, that's quite exciting, actually. Zanabu Akol is a member of a farmer cooperative society in Uganda, supported by the Carver Project. I am a farmer, and I deal in cassava growing and processing. Out of sample of growing, and all the skills and knowledge that I've acquired, I managed to get good money, increased income uh, in my family, and I was able to buy a set of oxen for plowing, for opening my land. I'm also able to educate my children up to a higher level. And I'm also able to use that money for buying my turkeys. Mm. I've also managed to have other projects like citrus growing through cassava, money and also skills. I'm happy and proud of cassava skills and knowledge that I've gained. Because if I compare the life before and presently, at least I am in a good position and I'm able to stand on my own and continue getting things that I lack. 
Because of the success of the NRI's Carver interventions, the market for HQCF is now expanding rapidly. So what needs to be done to ensure the future success of HQCF in Africa? Two sets of objectives in terms of moving forward. Uh, one objective is to continue to grow uh, the production of high quality cassava flour to meet these expanding new market opportunities uh, that we've discovered. Um, in, what we also would like to do is use the model of working with smallholder farmers, working with the private sector, working with end-use markets for other uses of cassava. Um, and one of those that we've already identified, for example, is the use of cassava in animal feed, where the animal feed business is growing as uh, production of livestock is growing in sub-Saharan Africa. We think there's some huge opportunities in that particular direction. But there may well be other opportunities that come along as Africa develops. You know, so rather than, for example, importing starch into Africa, as they do at present, they could well use uh, starch from cassava, and they produce an awful lot of cassava. <laughs> With what we have been able to do in the last four years, you've seen a lot of impact in national policy. Uh, you've, uh, we've had ministers coming out to say, look, what you guys are doing, I'm so impressed and I want to do it all over the country. Now, I would like to see this really happen. Because one thing is to say that you love to see it happen. But our experience in the cover project is it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of uh, hard work to facilitate it's happening, and uh, this is my dream. I like to see it really happen.